the drumbeats of war are getting louder. In focus, of course, are the new deployments, more and more deployments at that. On one side, Russia is sending in more troops. And on the other hand, NATO is trying to match this deployment. Stuck in between, of course, is Ukraine, where the 10-day-long military drills are currently underway. But even while leaders hope that some form of diplomacy will work out and, in a certain sense, dulls the tensions, the fear of invasion continues to loom over the region. The United States is now urging its citizens to leave the country immediately. The State Department has issued a new advisory. They want citizens to get out of here. Now, because of this, all of it comes down to one factor, and that is if there is a war, then the U.S. will not deploy soldiers to Ukraine, not even to evacuate its own citizens. What scenarios would you put American troops to rescue and get Americans out? They're not. That's a world war. When Americans and Russians start shooting at one another, we're in a very different world than we've ever been in. According to a U.S. intelligence report, the Russian military could launch a full-scale invasion with tanks that potentially could reach Kiev within 48 hours. So what the U.S. wants is for citizens to get out as soon as they can. Simply put, we continue to see very troubling signs of Russian escalation, uh, including new forces arriving at the uh, Ukrainian border. Um, and as we've said before, we're in a window uh, when an invasion could begin at any time. Uh, and to be clear, that includes during the Olympics. Um, we're continuing to draw down our, our embassy. Uh, we uh, uh, will continue that process. Uh, and we've also been very clear that um, any uh, American citizens who remain in Ukraine should leave now. Both the U.S. and the U.K. think that an invasion, in fact, could happen any time. Japan, too, has warned its citizens to leave the country immediately. However, Ukraine has played down Biden's evacuation order as nothing new. Meanwhile, new satellite images show an increased Russian deployment in the region. We're showing now the new images that are currently on your screen. Now, these are the new troops that Russia has moved to Belarus and also Crimea. Furthermore, reports suggest that 10,000 Russian soldiers are now camping in Crimea. Russia is currently holding joint military exercises in Belarus as well as naval drills in the Black Sea. It is all part of Moscow's surging military activity near Ukraine. Russia has not disclosed how many troops it has deployed. Moscow even says that it has the right to move forces around on its territory as it sees fit, insisting that they do not pose any external threat. Meanwhile, our executive editor, Palki Sharma Padhya, is on Ground Zero covering all the latest developments from Ukraine. She joined us earlier to bring us the latest updates from the Russia-Ukraine border, in fact, a very sensitive zone. In this next report, Palki gives us a sense of the public sentiment during the conflict, along with the repercussions of the U.S. president's recent warning telling Americans to leave Ukraine now. Listen in. I'm at uh, the St. Kivka uh, border checkpoint and this site where I'm standing will be the site of the opening battle uh, in case Russia decides to invade Ukraine. Because to my right is Belarus, this road leads to Belarus, the border is uh, right behind uh, where we are standing and to my left is Russia and where we are is Ukraine. In front of me you see the, uh, the last Ukrainian village uh, on the northern side which is St. Kivka. So this is a very very significant spot. Uh, uh, a former uh, defense minister of Ukraine recently said that the 600 mile long border between Ukraine and Belarus is a high risk zone and we uh, went here today to to see what was happening because on the other side of the border I'm sure you know that Russia and Belarus are conducting drills they have S400 missile systems SU35 fighter jets Iskander missiles tanks all sorts of military deployment and 30,000 troops and so this is a very sensitive zone uh, the border guards who are stationed here are uh, 
are are prepared they say for whatever is coming they've always operated under the shadow of war and uh, they understand the risks involved but they are uh, they are standing steady we we were given a, a, a tour of of this area and a lot of places are out of bounds you would understand because of security concerns there were vast stretches of land where we told we could not step on because there were landmines uh, but but this is uh, the last ukrainian village this is a border checkpoint uh, beyond which we have russian territory Well, Joe Biden's statement and his administration's assessment uh, becomes more dire by the day. When we began this week, we were telling our viewers about American intelligence assessments that said that Kiev could fall within 48 to 72 hours, that there might be 50,000 civilian casualties, 25,000 troop casualties on the Ukrainian side. This was American assessment. They could not, uh, they could not give uh, any specific details on how they arrived at those numbers, but that's what they said. Now, in this past week, we've seen the U.S. president repeatedly say that American citizens should evacuate this is the time to leave and he's made a very important statement today uh, where he says that he is not going to send US troops to evacuate citizens because he's been giving them enough warnings and he says we're facing one of the biggest militaries in the world ie the Russian military and things could quote unquote go crazy at any time and that does not instill a lot of uh, confidence in the people here but if you talk to the people of Ukraine they say that uh, they're hoping there is not going to be a war and they're confident in their forces and the spirits remain high Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.